Inauguration of Siminyo District Headquarters held on Thursday at Rengma Sports Association Ground of Siminyo. Monolith of the newly formed district unveiled by Chief Minister Rio in the presence of his cabinet colleagues and the people of Siminyo. Nagaland Chief Minister Nipirio says a position-less government formed for Naga solution. Rio says all stakeholders will be taken into consultation to find amicable solution. While addressing the gathering during the inauguration of Siminyo District, Nagaland Chief Minister Nipirio says Shamato District will be officially inaugurated on 4th March. Also clarified creating districts is based upon the policy of unifying the Nagas. The Koima Bench of Guwahati High Court asked the state government to file a comprehensive affidavit showing how the medical college project would be completed within the shortest time and how the government will ensure starting of the college this year. As Russia and Ukraine engage in intense warfare, as many as 40 Ukrainian soldiers and around 10 civilians reportedly killed by Russian shelling. Meanwhile, Ukraine says it killed around 50 Russian occupiers without providing details. Welcome viewers, you are watching Primetime News. This is Simli Salamjan. Let's have a look at the details. The inauguration of Siminyu District Headquarter was held on Thursday at Rengma Sports Association Ground Siminyu. The monolith of the newly formed district was unveiled by Chief Minister Nipirio in the presence of his cabinet colleagues and the people of Siminyu. During the inaugural program, Minister of Health and Family Welfare Pang Yu Pom appreciated the Chief Minister of the Day for recognizing more than 40 years Tikir tribe along with the recognition of four new districts. Centennial Village also appealed the people not to forget who has given the Rengmas a new district. Meanwhile, the program was also attended by Chief Secretary J. Alam IAS, MLA Hitachu, Advisors Dr. Nike Saleh Kere, Mohan Mokikon, and other dignitaries. Notably, the inauguration program was chaired by Deputy Commissioner Timinyu Dr. Sase Kolichusi IAS. While attending the inauguration of Siminyo District Headquarters, a special guest, Nagaland Chief Minister Nipirio, said that the present opposition-less United Democratic Alliance government has been formed for Naga solution. Rio further said that the solution to political Naga issue is achievable as all legislators are united under his leadership. During his speech, he also said a big meeting including all organizations like tribal hohos, student bodies, women organization and other political parties is in the pipeline how to go about to bring early solution to Naga political issue. While loading the Rengma people in his address, Rio said that though Rengma is a small tribe but their contribution towards the Nagas is big and the tribe is a tribe of principles and integrity, kind-hearted and friendliness, which is also rich in culture and tradition. Rengma, through sm those small community, have participated in all the important events in the Naga history. Yeah, how are the women? Jimmy BJP Alliance with NDVB. Aru India NPFB Naga political issue nimite opposition less kurikina Amagan United Democratic Alliance Government kurikina ekilo kurijas Naga Laga Hindu political issue resolved Gorole Amagan cabinet 
मीटिंग डांगोर मीटिंग एक टाल लोगे ट्रैवल हाउस स्टूडेंट कम्युनिटी यूथ वूमेन और वो पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज मिलाएगे ना किन्हें का ना का पॉलिटिकल इश्यू प्रस्तुत करो इधर बाबना लेकिन आज ऐसे माँ बनोगान आपने लगा एक ता प्रिंसिपल एक ता इंटीग्रिटी लगा ट्राइबस आपने हार्ड वर्किंग ऐसे और आपने मोन टू while addressing the gathering during the inauguration of Siminyu District, Nagaland Chief Minister Nipirio said that Shamato District will be officially inaugurated on 4th March. He also clarified that all new districts are created, but creating districts is best upon the policy of unifying the Nagas. A district creation should divide Nagas and his government follows that policy in his speech, Rio also mentioned demands made by Pochuri tribe for a separate district. On the issue, Chief Minister opined that election, that decision will be considered later if criteria of the government is fulfilled after delimitation. Rio went on to say that the districts in the state are divided into three categories of big, medium and small. He added that if Naga political issue is resolved and Nagas are united, more LS seat and RS seat will be allotted to the state. Samato district Nibole Kota Kuratake Yemchingar Yemkum Aro Tikir Ito Duita main tribe Hakita is it? Kendo Tikir ke tribe recognize Kuratai Aro boundary demarcation to Yemchingar Kanto बोलना एक एमजीगर और रोटी के दो नोकलाक की पहले तो इंसान इन्हें कहाँ था किसे इन्हें निम्नलिखित आवागमन इंप्रेसिबल अप्रूव्ड इसे डिस्ट्रिक्ट बोले कि तो आप ना कहाँ डिस्ट्रिक्ट बॉन्डरी ठीक नहामी और वो टिकेट लगा ट्राइब रिकॉग्नेशन दिखे ना मिला है कि ना था किले एनाउंस करो वो बाद अगले लगान और अब कुछ ही नफा है कि ना एजुकेशन स्टार्ट कर दे ये तो मुझे आप इसे ले लगान लीजिए मिला है कि ना डिस्ट्रिक्ट पर इसे फिर ने मुझे सामान्य डिस्ट्रिक्ट को मार्च फोर्थ के अमागन डिस्ट्रिक्ट एनोग्रेशन निमित्त दरियास तो टुली डिस्ट्रिक्ट और मोंगलेम्बा डिस्ट्रिक्ट मोगोक्चन तो तीन दर डिस्ट्रिक्ट रोले बाबना करो जे वो कहा वो कहा भी जिन्हें के पूरी की ना लोअर रेंज तादेय डिस्ट्रिक्ट सेपरेट मांगी जे और अपना ना नेबर वो को वो तो भी डिस्ट्रिक्ट मांगी चे ये तो आमगन बाकी चे नागर तो यूनिटी हो बोलेगे मिला बोलेगे ये तो लगा प्रिंसिपल ये तो लगा पॉलिसी आसे ये तो नहीं है पॉलिसी निश्चिना Tribal district to na bangi wo. Dangar hobi, chato hobi, ekta hai dhangi wo lage. Mila hai ke na dhangi wo lage. Ito cabinet decision lo ishe. Haru maanga thakan bhi. Government policy appreciate ko re ke na. Ito na maanga. Ito khan bhuji ke na. Maanga ya to bond ko ishe. 
The Koima Bench of Guwahati High Court has asked the state government file a comprehensive affidavit showing how the medical college project would be completed within the shortest time and how the government will ensure starting of the college this year. A bench comprising Justice Song Kup Chung Serto and Justice Devashis Bora heard the public interest litigation on February 22 and listed the matter again after three weeks. The judges said not only the medical directorate but the other stakeholders in the state machinery should be involved in the implementation of the project given the fact that a medical college, a first in the state, was crucial and important for the state. The court stated that the time frame given for completion of different components of the project are well past except for the medical college building and boys and girls hostel for which timeless timelines have been extended till March 2022. Naga National Political Group Leader and Kitovi Jimomi has said that the new accord should offer win-win situation for all and that the rule of law must be upheld. Kitovi told a group of youth during a virtual video conference that a rule of law apply which should be equally to everyone and as needed. The leader further stated that one cannot dream of Nagaland as a state where people pursue my way or the highway. Notably, an online discussion was organized recently by a group of Naga youths in the South Asian region on the theme The Conquest and Morality of Nagaism. Meanwhile, the NNPG and former Nagaland Governor R.N. Ravi negotiated on the principle that politics is an art of possibilities and so the focus was to resolve the Indo-Naga political problems. Furthermore, Kidovi said some issues involving Naga peace peace deal were very emotive and sensitive and that the government of India should respect the uniqueness of the Naga case and be ready to be flexible. Deputy Commissioner Kohima Grigori Tejawali in a circular informed all the Gonburas and the Kohima Sardar areas to submit the annual house tax for the year 2021 to 2022 to the DC's office on or before the 25th of February 2022. He also informed that a house tax has to be collected by the concerned Gonburas and submit to the authority as per the enclosed format. The circular also said that failure to submit the house tax within stipulated time will entail forfeiture of the house tax commission and red blankets to the airing Donburas. In view of the upcoming 2023 General Assembly elections in Nagaland, a core committee of the Chakesang Clean Election Movement held meeting on Clean Election Movement. Notably, it was the first sitting which was held on February 16 at Futsuro. According to CCEM press release, the meeting discussed on the need to ensure one person, one name in the electoral role and also proposed to include area council chairman members in a core committee for better coordination and wider participation. The release stated that Chekasang Public Organization would be appraised with a request to disseminate information for formation in all different denominational churches. Notably, Chairman of CCEM, Reverend Zezo Parrako, chaired the meeting and welcomed the members, while Executive Secretary of Chekasang Baptist Church Council, Reverend Krotso Mero, pronounced a prayer for the meeting. Furthermore, at the meeting, it was decided to have consultative meeting with Chekasang Frontal Organizations on March 7 at CBCC Mission T Chiki Futuro. Angami community to observe Sikrini Kamini Hornbill Fest to commence on February 25 at Naga Heritage Village, Kisama. Chief Minister Rio will be gracing the festival as special guest, public invited to be a part of the festival.
The weather across Nagaland will experience partly cloudy weather in the coming days. The Nagaland State Disaster Management Authority, Home Department, in coordination with Regional Meteorological Center, Guwahati, on Wednesday, issued weather updates for the coming days in the state. Notably, rainfall activity is expected in districts of Mukokchong, Kifre, Peran, Twensang, and Noklak between 23 to 26 of February 2022. The weather condition in most of the districts will improve starting from 27th of February. However, some of the districts where snowfall was observed like Kohima is expected to again hit a minimum low temperature of 0 degree Celsius with a maximum temperature of 12 degree Celsius and Peck is expected to have a minimum and maximum temperature of 3 degree Celsius and 19 degree Celsius respectively, while Ognato will have a minimum and maximum temperature of 2 degree Celsius and 17 degree Celsius, Kifre will have maximum and minimum and maximum temperature of 5 degrees Celsius and 22 degrees Celsius respectively, and Twensang will have minimum and maximum temperature of 4 degrees Celsius and 18 degrees Celsius during the stipulated period. And the NSDMA Home Department, through release, urged the public to exercise exercise caution to avoid any eventualities and also requested all the DTMAS and other line departments to attend to any emergencies caused by natural calamities during the period mentioned. A marketing shade come vegetable godown was inaugurated at marketing complex Zinapoto town on Wednesday by Deputy Commissioner Zinapoto Peter Lichamo. IT, it may be mentioned that the shade come godown will benefit vegetable go growers, buyers in many ways. Meanwhile, the Deputy Commissioner urged the caretaker to utilize the marketing shed and the vegetable go down in proper ways so that it serves the needs of the people of the districts in the years to come. District Administration and Mahila Shakti Kendra Longleng conducted a skill training on modern basket and crochets making from 19th to 23rd February at Guest House Sakshi Block of Longleng. Notably, the training covered a total of seven villages under Sakshi Block, while the main target group was the school dropout girls and unemployed women to provide etiquette training to create opportunities for women and girl child to enhance their skill for self-reliance. Furthermore, a total of 25 trainees participated in the training. It may be mentioned that the trainers for the program were Sangla Pom and Hem Yang Pom. Training on low-cost preservation unit under the centrally sponsored scheme mission for integrated development of horticulture was organized by the Department of Horticulture Longleng on Tuesday where 20 beneficiaries from different villages under the Longleng district attended the program. Notably, the technical staff illustrated the importance of post-harvest technology with special reference to horticultural producers readily available in the district. Meanwhile, preservation components include including pulverizing machines, bottles and other packaging materials, sealing machine, weighing balance were distributed to the beneficiaries. Furthermore, a hands-on demonstration of the operation of those units was also done. Kilia King, the second highest peak in Nagaland, stand at an elevation of 3,462 meter after Mount Saramati. Kilia is located in the Kemnyungan eastern part of Nagaland under Noklak district, bordering Myanmar and sharing ranges across Choklangan, Huyu, Kingchung. Chipur and Pang villages. According to scholars, Kilia is an iconic mountain, generally not fertile for vegetation, as it has harsh and cold climatic condition. Kilia is also sung in songs and folk chants welcoming its winter snowfall in Nagaland. The mountain Kilia is scaled by Satam Longchar and PhD scholar of the University of Australia.
The 27th biennial meet of Kohima Village Gazetted Officers Association was held at Dolhau Garden, Krolezo Billy Gram Road, El Kel on Wednesday. Advisor for Urban Development and Municipal Affairs, Dr. Nikezale Niki Kire, while addressing the gathering, called upon the members to meet often to have more understanding and coordination in executing any activities for the benefit of the younger generation and community as well. Notably, the function was chaired by Vice President KYGOA Engineer Zale Kotsu Yese, while the innov invocation, invocation prayer was pronounced by Research Officer HNFW Kirkre Satu on the occasion of the new team of the KYGOA office bearers for the tenure of 2022 to 2025 was also announced by Medo Zale Pin Yu as President. Keto Sito Shekose as Vice President, Engineer Keto Vizo Tsika as General Secretary, and Kozo Saso Chazu as Treasurer. A block futsal tournament come fit day for sensitization on Beti Bachao Beti Parao was organized on Tuesday at Tenning Town. Notably, the program was organized by the Tenning Town Western United Club in collaboration with Tenning Block Task Force on BBBP under the team Save the Girl, Child and Educate Her. Furthermore, additional Deputy Commissioner Tenning Roseto Nuri, while addressing the gathering, appreciated the organizers and other departments for taking the initiatives collectively to uplift the youngsters through sports. He also spoke on the importance of parenting and encouraged the gathering to ensure the education and participation of every child in various activities. The Chief Electoral Officer Nagaland has informed that the Election Commission of India on the occasion of the National Voters Day 2022 has launched a national voter awareness contest with the theme My Vote is My Future, Power of One Vote. It may be mentioned that Commission has reiterated the importance of every vote through creative expression. The contest is a part of Election Commission of India Systematic Voters Education and Electoral Participation Program to tap the talent and creativity of the people so as to strengthen democracy through their participation. The National Voters Awareness Contest shall have five categories of contests like quiz contest, slogan contest, song contest, video making contest, poster design contest, and it is open to all age group. The contests are scheduled to from 25th January to 2022 to 15th March Ahead of the assembly elections in Manipur, troops of Assam Rifles have recovered a huge cache of explosive materials and six improvised explosive devices near Bituk village in More along the Myanmar border. A defence spokesman said that the Moran Battalion of Assam Rifles, acting on a secret tip-off on Wednesday, napped a man riding an imported motorcycle into India from Myanmar carrying a suspicious wooden box. On being challenged by the troopers, the person dropped the wooden box and fled back to Myanmar. The Assam Rifles troopers recovered six IEDs with cortex, electric wire and explosive materials from the wooden box. According to reports, Assam Rifles is proactively guarding the unfenced 400km India-Myanmar border in the run-up to the assembly elections in Manipur. 
It is suspected that the IEDs were meant to disrupt the election process in Manipur. The seized IEDs and explosive materials were handed over to the Moray police for further investigation. The 9th Biennial General Conference of the Naga Law Students Federation was held at the Jubilee Memorial Center at Lire Kohima on Thursday. Notably, three law colleges of Nagaland participated in the conference. Meanwhile, the president of NLSF, C. Talimua, graced the conference. In his presidential address, C. Talimua called upon the state to direct attention to the due issues in regard to the Directorate of Prosecution and full functioning High Court in the state. He told the law students that no matter how much they achieve in life, there is always more to do if they want to do for the betterment of Nagaland. With barely a week left for the first phase of the Manipur Assembly pools, the regional Naga People's Front has stepped up its campaigns in the Naga-dominated hill districts in a large last-ditch effort to woo voters. Scores of NPF veteran leaders and legislators are reportedly walking the extra mile to make a decisive tent in the regional party's electoral fortunes in the neighboring state. In a bid to assess the NPF's party position in the Naga-dominated districts in Manipur, former minister and veteran NPF leader Kuzoluzo Azoninu, who is also the team leader of the NPF's campaign in Sinapati district, had a conversation. During his talk, Azo stated that NPF will emerge kingmaker in Manipur. Following Putin's invasion early on Thursday, explosions were reported in several areas of Ukraine and air sirens went off in Kyiv, indicating that the capital city is under attack. Shortly afterwards, the Russian Defense Ministry said that Ukraine's air bases and military infrastructure has been neutralized. Notably, as many as 40 Ukrainian soldiers and around 10 civilians have been killed by Russian shilling. Meanwhile, it was reported that Ukraine said it killed around 50 Russian occupiers without providing details. Meanwhile, Ukraine's ambassador to India urged Prime Minister Narendra Modi to contact Putin and Ukrainian President Volodymyr to immediate the crisis. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Thursday said that the country has severed diplomatic relations with Russia after Moscow launched an all-out invasion of Ukraine by land, air and sea, the biggest attack by one state against another in Europe since World War II and confirmation of the world fears of the West. Zelensky has declared martial law in the country and Ukrainian foreign minister vowed to fight and defeat Russia. It is to be mentioned that Prime Minister Narendra Modi is likely to speak to Russian President Vladimir Putin tonight. The Embassy of India in Ukraine has advised Indian nationals in the country to refrain from traveling to Kyiv and stay put in safe locations after Russia launched a full-fledged attack on Ukraine. Looking into the current state of affairs amid a Russian invasion on Ukraine is highly uncertain. The embassy appealed to all Indian nations, nationals in Ukraine to maintain calm and stay safe. The embassy further advised those traveling to Kyiv, including those traveling from western parts to Kyiv, of Kyiv to return to their respective cities temporarily, especially towards safer places along the western bordering countries. Putin's invasion of Ukraine early on Thursday, the Indian embassy in Ukraine capital Kyiv has started to make alternate arrangements for evacuation of Indian nationals after the Ukrainian government closed its airspace. The Ukrainian government closed its airspace following announcement of a full-scale invasion of the country by Russian President Vladimir Putin. 
In view of closure of Ukrainian airspace, schedule of special flight stands cancelled. Meanwhile, alternative arrangements are being met for evacuation of Indian nationals. Furthermore, embassy stated that it will convey information or as soon as such arrangements are finalized so that Indian nationals can relocate to the western part of the country. Meanwhile, the Indian embassy in Ukraine has asked Indian nationals in the country to stay in their familiar locations and ask them to carry their passports and necessary documents on your person at all times. Biden in a written statement condemned the unprovoked and unjustified attack and promised that the U.S. and its allies would hold Russia accountable. Biden said that he plans to speak to Americans on Thursday after meeting his G7 counterparts to announce the further consequences the United States and its allies and partners will impose on Russia for needless act of aggression against Ukraine and global peace and security. Though the U.S. on Tuesday announced the repositioning of forces around the Baltics, Biden said that he will not send in troops to fight Russia. President Biden said that U.S. will coordinate with NATO allies to ensure a strong and united response that deters any aggression against the alliance. Biden blamed President Putin for choosing a premeditated war that will bring a catastrophic loss of lives and human suffering. European Union Chief Ursula von der Leyen promised to weaken Russia's economic base and its capacity to modernize following the barbaric attack by Moscow against Ukraine. She stated that EU condemns such barbaric attack and the cynical arguments that have been used to justify it. Reportedly, European Union leaders will impose new sanctions on Russia, freezing its assets, halting access of its banks to the European financial market in reaction to its barbaric attack on Ukraine. Lian will be presenting massive and strategic sanctions against Russia for approval later today. These sanctions have been designed to take a heavy toll on the Kremlin's interest and their ability to finance war. By strongly condemning Russia's unjustified attack on Ukraine, Lian wrote on Twitter that in this dark hour, the EU's thoughts are with Ukraine and the innocent women, men and children as they face unprovoked attack and fear for their lives and that it holds Kremlin accountable. She also highlighted that many Russians do not want war. However, it will not allow President Vladimir Putin to replace the rule of law by the rule of force and ruthlessness. Speaking alongside Lian, EU High Representative Joseph Borrell said punitive measures from the 27-member bloc against Russia would be the harshest packet of sanctions that has ever been implemented. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization issued a statement on Russia's attack on Ukraine and stated that the Russia's horrifying attack on Ukraine is unjustified and unprovoked. NATO stated that they condemned the attack in the strongest possible terms and stated that this renewed attack is a grave violation of international laws including the UN Chapter, Helsinki Final Act, the Charter of Paris, the Budapest Memorandum and the NATO-Russia Founding Act. NATO stated that they will stand with the people of Ukraine and its legitimate demo democratically elected president, parliament and government and called on Russia to immediately cease its military actions and withdraw all its forces from in and around Ukraine to fully respect international humanitarian law. NATO urged Russia in the strongest terms to turn back from the path of violence and aggression it has chosen and stated that Russia's leader must bear full responsibility for the consequences of their actions and Russia will pay a very heavy economic and political price. NATO also stated that throughout this crisis, NATO, the allies and their partners have met every effort to pursue diplomacy and dialogue with Russia, including at the highest levels and met many substantive proposals to enhance the security of all nations in the Euro-Atlantic region. It stated that it repeatedly invited Russia to talks 
in to talks in the NATO Russia Council, but Russia did not reciprocate and chose escalation. NATO further stated that Russia's actions pose a serious threat to Euro Atlantic security and that they will have geostrategic consequences. NATO further stated that they will continue to take all necessary measures to ensure the security and defense of all allies. So viewers, that's all we have for now in the bulletin. Thank you for watching Nagaland TV.